Hey, this is Mike Pope, and you're watching For Bass Players Only. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching For Bass Players Only.com, the number one site for learning bass online. We take the frustration out of learning bass so you can build confidence, have fun, and just enjoy making music. It's not for everyone. It's for bassplayersonly.com. We've got a special guest this week, my old friend, Mr. Mike Pope. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Good. I, you know, I'm trying to remember how we know each other, maybe bumping into each other at, at the NAMM shows. or Maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember for sure. I just remember at one point we did an interview. It's been about 10 years ago or maybe more. But uh, Well, funny you should bring that up. We actually did two interviews. One was published on September 12th, 2011. And the other one was published on June 23rd, 2014. So we've got some catching up to do. Those are yeah. great interviews. I read both of those this morning. We talked all about your parents and, and the upbringing that you had and your brothers and the whole musical experience, your uh, your experience at North Texas. I don't remember. Was it University of North Texas when you were there or was it, it still had, North Texas State? It had just changed the year that I got there. Okay, because I, I visited that school. I, I uh, considered going there. You mentioned some some people in your interview. Neil Slater, you mentioned, mm -hmm. and and the one o'clock band. I didn't realize you were in the one o'clock band. Yeah, yeah, for like three years, yeah. Wow. And uh, was Mark Johnson there when you were there? No, Mark was before me. Um, he was there okay. before me. In fact, but he lived in Denton and, and, and uh, at least some of the time, and he was at my senior recital, of all oh. things, which was bizarre. Um yeah, he came and he 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 attended my recital with his daughter. I think he brought his daughter. So, pretty interesting. And I I, rem I remember a man named Ed Rainbow. Was that his name? Ed Rainbow was the classical bass teacher there. Yeah. Okay. Did did you have him as a teacher? Yeah, he was the only he was the only classical teacher other than grad students. Um, yeah. So I, I studied with him for the good most, if not all, of the time that I was there. I can't remember to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and and what about your non-classical base? Who did you study with there? Nobody. I mean, they, they didn't just didn't do that in North Texas. There was I don't know what they're doing now, but at the time there was no apply. There were no applied lessons in jazz. It was it was only classical, which for bass honestly is about as good as anything really because you know it's you want to get your chops together on upright bass with classical repertoires you know, the ultimate equalizer. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I, I studied with Lucas Drew at University of Miami. Oh, yeah. Okay. We also talked about your time in New York and the work you did at Fodera and mm -hmm. playing with Chick Corea Electric Band and Al Di Miola, one of my heroes. And uh, in the second interview, we, we talked about uh, the, the new, at the time, new album was Cold Truth, Warm Heart. Yes. We talked about Joe Locke and the whole story. So yeah. uh, that was 2014. We've got a little catching up to do. Yeah. But, um, I, I want to ask you about what's going on. But my first question, are you still designing circuits and preamps and that kind uh, of stuff? Not, not really. I, I, uh, um, I, had, I, had, I had an experience at, a, at one of uh, Victor Wooten's camps when a student came up to me and had no idea I played bass. He, all he knew that was that I made preamps. And that really pissed me off, if I'm being honest, because, and not, and not at him, but more at me. You know, I was like, this is like, this is not where I want my career to go. This is not what I want to be known for. It takes so much more work, so much more time, and so much more effort to reach a level at, as a musician to be hired by the guys that I've been hired by than it does to build a preamp of the level of technology that I built. And to be known for that before music was just really insulting to me. So um, I, I, I really, uh, but you know, again, I was not, uh, I was mad at myself about, you know, I was not, I wasn't mad at the world or anything like that. But, but so I just decided at that point that I needed to start heading in a, in a different direction. And uh, f I guess probably by the, when we did that interview i was probably right in the middle of getting my master's degree i think i must have been if it was june of 2014 
right? Was that what you said it was? That's you, when it was published. So we probably it did it oh, a month or two before that. So I was probably in the middle of my spring semester at, uh, of, uh, of my first year getting my master's. Well, what school was that? That was at Towson University in, uh, in Towson, Maryland. It's a state school. Really, really, really great faculty there, actually. And I, I got a very, very good education that was very classically oriented. I mean, it was kind of a hybrid deal, but I, I really Oh, so wanted... it was music. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was music, yeah. Um, and uh, I just wanted to get a master's because I wanted the credential. And um, Towson turned out to be a really great school. And, and I had, some, I had a, 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 some really, really great teachers there, uh, both in terms of, of base. A, 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 a Ukrainian guy named uh, Victor Devoskin, who's still, still around here, is a wonderful classical and jazz player. Um, and uh, uh, a guy named Carl Schmidt, who's a, a real heavy-duty scholar, uh, and and um, uh, is a Poulenc scholar actually, uh, Francis Poulenc. Oh, yeah. In fact, he 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 built Poulenc's and he he compiled Poulenc's entire library, kind of like what Kirscher did with all the Mozart stuff and BWV did when he went back and they got you know. Was he a flute player, Poulenc? Because I knew you know, he had a, I don't know what a he flute played, sonata. Actually. I my sister-in-law is a flute player, and there's a uh, and my brother is a piano player, and they I've heard that them, them play that sonata many times by Poulenc. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know actually what instrument he played. I mean, I know that he was a he was a prolific you know French composer and, and a contemporary of a lot of the you know a lot of the heavies, um, Debussy and you know and and, and Satie. I believe they were all around the same time, um, but. Um, yeah, it's it, 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 but but it, at any rate, you know, Carl, Carl Schmidt turned out to be a really a wonderful mentor, and a brilliant brilliant man. Um, uh, taught me a lot about uh, about classical literature, also about research and about bibliography. You know, like a research and bibliography class. Basically, I had to write up you know my my thesis basically, and the pro all the process of, of 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 learning that it really it really really made me understand that when it comes to colleges what you're really paying for is a network because <laughs> you can get a pretty darn good education in a lot of places you really can there's some great faculties at some great little schools in the middle of nowhere and you can get a great education and then what you know that and it's already a then what situation anyway a lot of ways because it's such you know the business is so tough but but um if you if you don't graduate with a network of some kind then you're really in in big trouble <laughs> yeah, um so um that's why uh that's why i feel that berkeley is such a a great place and and and, and you know there are a few places in in the world that have you know they've established they've just by virtue of the number of students that have come through they've established these de facto cells <laughs> in various places around the country and um there's a there's a level of of sort of fraternity that you know that you experience when you you know you go to these places oh man you went to north texas oh cool da, 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 and this and that and the other and you remember this dude and you know there's just there's a little bit of background right and 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 that makes a big difference in in, in forging relationships with people yeah the, the miami has that vibe too and then sure. everybody went out to california they called it miami west couldn't get out <laughs> of the way and walking down ventura boulevard yeah john liebman is that you <laughs> isn't that funny yeah it's crazy man but um, anyway, yeah, that was, that was the experience with that. And, and I did, I, the, the masters was, was, was really, was really great. Um, and, uh, uh, in the record, you know, the, the, uh, the record, the culture with warm heart had just had, was just kind of dropping right at that point. Uh, June of, of 2014 is when the record was released. Although I recorded it much earlier. Um, but, uh, yeah, at, at any rate, yes. Um, uh, the, the whole, that whole thing with, with, uh, you know, with preamps and all that business was really, uh, I, I, I really got a little drugged on, on number that number one, that, and, and number two, just dealing with dealing with customers could be a real drag sometimes. If it weren't for our customers, we could be running a great business. Right, I know. Well, and the thing was most, most, the vast majority of people were great. The vast majority of people were reasonable and communicative and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I just decided, you know what, this just isn't really, I, I, this isn't really for me. I'm not a business guy. I'm not a shrewd person. I, 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 I'm better off just trying to be creative. So thank God. So I got the master's and I got the college gig 
Thank God, you know. And so uh, in Berkeley, I couldn't imagine a better place to work than Berkeley. Um, I want to ask you about Berkeley, but before we get off this, yes. I, there, there was one thing that you said in one of your interviews. I was reading it this morning, as I said, I was really taken aback. You said, and this is a direct quote from you, okay. I am the least gear oriented person I know. That is I'm true. Like, what? That's totally true. That's totally true. Um, <laughs> Does Federa know that? Does what, well, know I mean, that? When I say gear oriented, I mean, I mean this sort of gear culture you know uh, uh, you know uh, guys who like to get together and talk about gear and talk about yeah. this and get excited about what's coming out and yada 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 i mean i that's just that's not me it never has been well i mean no that's not true it, it at a time it definitely was you know but ultimately um i decided that playing is so hard that that i, I don't I just I need to focus on that. I just need to focus on, uh, you know, on on and, and when when my gear does what I want it to do, and when I'm the, when I'm the problem with my sound, then I'm not going to go buy more gear. I know? can relate a hundred percent. I remember back in the eighties, I had my Macintosh Plus and I had my D50 and my TX802, and I'm trying to learn MIDI, and and it's mm -hmm. a lot easier now because you had to what is it source on for whatever it was Glo local on. I oh yeah, know. yeah, local on. Oh yeah, yeah. But but the traveling with the guys, all the traveling I did, and and they and I subscribed to Electronic Musician Magazine, Music Technology Magazine, and then it, it was taking me away from my playing mm -hmm. and all the traveling I did, you know, Central America, South America, all over with these Latin pop stars and the guys in the band were all really into what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So they'd start talking and then they'd get excited and they'd start talking faster and faster. And then all of a sudden it was in Spanish, <laughs> 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 well, which didn't make a difference because the English sounded like it could have been Chinese to me. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, well, it was, uh, who was it? Mark Portman, I remember, the keyboard player from Miami. He went out mm -hmm. played with the Rippingtons and did a whole bunch of stuff. But I asked him about it, and he, he says, you, you know, I just learned something new, and I incorporate it into my playing. And that's how that's how gear doesn't bog me down. I just learn it, I use it, and I go on with the music. And to me, I just... You know, I couldn't even get that far. I just well, but, but but keyboard players are a little bit of a they have they're a little different animal when it comes to that kind of thing well, because it's true. just you know I mean sound design and all that is such an integral part of what you know what yeah. they do. So I mean I, I I I tend to think that for the same reason that you know that jazz musicians probably tend to know theory better than classical musicians because we well I should not jazz musicians but improvising musicians yeah. in, in tend to know more about theory just because we have to use it all every day all day long. You know like that's it, that's the only reason. It's not because anybody's smarter than you know anybody else but we don't uh, get hung up on rules and breaking rules of not breaking. Uh, no, it sounds good. It's you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the the melodic minor scale, you know, you're playing it up, you're playing it down the same way. Oh no, no, you raise the sixth and seventh on the way up, and then you lower them on the way down. I'm not putting down anybody. I'm just telling you my reaction to, to my experience. And the same thing with the five string. You know, oh no, the five string in the classical is a C, not a B. Well, you know what? The bass is tuned in for us. We're going with a B, and that's yeah. just makes more sense. Yeah, I mean it, it's it. Yeah, I mean you know it, it's uh, there. There are reasons for you know it, historically. I know there are reasons for most of those things being the way they were, and there are probably new reasons for them to be other things. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just it's just not a static situation, right? I mean, things are always evolving and, and changing. So. Um, just, just in terms of, of need. In fact, one of my students at, 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 at Berkeley just wrote a, is, is doing his final presentation, which is essentially like a final research paper, but it's an oral present, an oral presentation. Uh, so you don't have to actually write it down, but he's doing his whole thing on the, on the, the development of the, you know, extended range bases. Um, why it happened, he's going back and he, I, he, he had a nice long conversation with, excuse me, with Vinny Federa, got a lot of good information from him. And he's going back and he's looking at things like, you know, like when you look at it, at, at, at what's the, the chalk, move me no, well, it's not a chalk a tune, but she recorded move me no mountain and Anthony Jackson's bass line on that and how he was playing that on a detuned four string. And so the way that line lays on a detuned four string is actually pretty easy. The way it lays on a five string or a six string is horrible. And so, you know, it, it, it begs the question, well, I wonder how the bass line construction would have been different had it not been conceived of on a detuned four string but if it had been conceived you know it just you don't know it's just it's just 
that is know, a niche speculation topic. What? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, you know, but but that's his thing. I mean, he's yeah. he's a he's a private he's a, it's a private instruction student uh, of mine who's in his eighth semester, and that's what they do. They write a they write a yeah. paper basically. So that's in, in it's what he was interested in. He's a, he's a six string Federer guy. His name is Victor Blagojev. He's a very good player. Oh, um, I met him. Yeah, did you meet? Oh, you actually you met. Him. He was playing. Was playing on your. He was playing a Federer. Playing an Adam's title. Fedora. That was him. Yeah, Federer. Yeah, that's Fedora. the guy. Yes, Federer six drummer. string. And that drummer Noah. Holy crap, she's oh, amazing. Oh yeah, from she's Israel. Israel. Woof, man. Yeah. Holy yeah, she's she's amazing. Um, but um, at any rate, um. Yeah, so he's that's. So I mean, there the needs are like, and the needs are constantly changing, and you know, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm certainly not not a rules guy, and uh, uh, yeah. So. So what what is keeping you busy these days, Mike? Oh man, well, I'm still not entirely living my life for myself <laughs> yet um uh which i'm actually very happy about i mean i'm still really you know very involved in in my kids you know uh, uh transition into adulthood you know and my my oldest is uh, going to be a senior at uh at the manhattan school she's an opera singer she's brilliant she's a brilliant opera singer studying with another very brilliant opera singer named Catherine malfitano who's a like, emmy award-winning heavy duty massive you know diva star you know um in the opera world and my other daughter just was just accepted in her studio actually which is amazing also at manhattan also in manhattan yeah yeah and they didn't give her a scholarship but she <laughs> I don't know how she did it, but she finagled one. She emailed oh. him and, and she she squeezed some significant dough out of him. You know, I mean, legitimately so. But it was pretty impressive. She's, she's impressive, man. I, I don't hope I don't ever. Hope she never gets mad at me, or I'll, I'll probably <laughs> lose everything. Um, I'll be divorced by my daughter, and she'll take half. I don't know. But anyway, but no. But she's she's doing great actually, and she's and she's ama She's really a brilliant singer. They're two, they're two very different kinds of musicians which is good since they're sisters they're not super competitive because one has more of a kind of a leader voice and the other has a bigger sort of more operatic you know and, and they got they're finding their own space which is great so i'm just still kind of like getting people organized she, my youngest took two gap years one of which by chance wound up being you know 2020 you know that 20 and uh -huh. 21 which you know covid so it actually worked out great and then she didn't get around to getting getting going for the following year so she took two gap years which my only concern was all oh, crap so I mean, she takes two she might lose momentum but she didn't she she uh, she kept she kept going and she's uh she's gonna go so i once they're gone then i'll be gone well they'll never really be gone but you know it's, <laughs> but um uh, once they're out of the house then i'll have a little more time but but I did take the summer off of Berkeley this this summer. I've been going every summer. I've been teaching there. Oh, the the but, five week thing. Uh, there's a twelve week semester as well. Oh. So there's yeah, oh, so oh the semester. Oh, that's yeah. For so actual there's like a, there's students. like an actual twelve week semester. Yeah, I mean the five week when my son went. That's just for high school kids. But that's mostly not really mostly yeah. and the, okay. yeah, yeah yeah and the five week is and I, I generally would teach one day a week into the twelve week until the five week started, uh, and I teach two days. But the reality is that 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 with the travel and with from the Baltimore being, area, yeah, the summer yeah. being the most expensive time to travel back and forth between Baltimore and Boston, because the only time anybody really wants to be or to visit Boston, I think, is when it's nice, which is in the, about the seven days in the middle of the summer that it's really warm. So um, I. Um, uh, I, I just decided to stay home. So I, I'm probably, I'm, I'm in the, not probably, I'm going to one way or another make a record this summer. Uh, it's, I'm a little late on the up, you know, a little, little, little late on the, uh, getting started on it, but I think I can do it. I've already spoken with Jeffrey Keezer and he's, he's on board. So then that, the, the piano you, chair. You talked about him in one of the interviews. Oh, he yeah. said, like, he's, I don't know how he does what he I don't, does. I don't, I don't, still don't know how he does what he does, and, and, but um, but anyway, but he's he's on board, and, and the keyboard chair is very central to most of what I write. So, well, you because you you're a keyboard player, you're right? A piano right. Player and too. I write a lot. I write a lot on piano. So, uh, and Jeffrey just is one of those guys who just kind of gets things immediately. Just oh, you mean you mean you mean oh, okay, got it, done. <laughs> it's like now it sounds like he wrote it. You know, it's just how he does it. It's amazing. And uh, but that's gonna probably happen in August. I'm just I've got this freaking recording studio here. Like I've got a whole space. I've got this gorgeous nine foot concert grand, and 
and and you know i need to be um, why am i not making a freaking record covid's at least for the time being covid's you know sleeping on the couch for <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get up and hammer us again but um I, I thought well i should just do it what the hell so i just i so i will <laughs> yeah, well you mentioned again going back to 2014 2011 you were hoping to put out a, was it a, a record or two every year or i wanted a record to every two years or something i like wanted that. to do that i did and it just wasn't it wasn't plausible at that time and i and i have i i as as i mentioned you know a, a, a minute ago having to do with just really being focused on on my my kids and getting them you know parenting them through high school and on into college and, and getting them you know sort of like and so i can let go of the bike and let them <laughs> uh yeah. you know what i mean let them do their thing um i it's i've just sort of decided that that was really where i needed to put my my focus so i you know i've practiced a lot i've kept my hands i mean i'm in good shape playing wise and everything but but i i haven't uh you know i i just had that hasn't been hasn't been able to be a priority i would love to do that i would love to start doing that now well just we'll see how this next one goes uh and um uh, i would i would love to be able to put one a year out and just you know and just try to just go ahead and invest do a five-year plan you know just invest the dough and and uh and see where i wind up after five years but you know i'll be 55 56 years old at that point and it'll either be too late or it, it won't <laughs> but, <laughs> it won't be too late <laughs> what about the uh the guys that come to me at for bass players only and i say guys because most of them are most of mm -hmm. them are men in their 50s 60s 70s mm -hmm. i got an email the other day from a guy who's 81 mm. and uh they're not trying to make careers out of uh, being bass players they right. have some time they want to play some classic rock riffs with their buddies they want to play some blues shuffles maybe a little funky yeah. r&b some soul so in in that spirit in that context what advice do you have for someone like that who wants to learn bass what can you share with our students well i mean so it's a good that's a really good question actually i, I well not actually you ask a lot of good questions but that that's a good question that, that um that, uh, that I, I, I know when I'm teaching a young student, I'm always very reticent to say, here's how you play this thing. And there's how you play that thing. And here's, you know what I mean? Like I, I generally really, I generally really try to go, that was a stupid way to put that, but from the general to the specific, I try to, I try to introduce people to, to an overview of the skills that are needed and what's supposed to be. And, and we, and we deal with one thing at a time, but it's rare that I'm going to say, here's how you play, uh, beat it or something, you know, like I'm really going to just teach somebody how to play that baseline. But I do think that, that that for someone like what you're talking about, I think that the big key is is repertoire. I think just learn as many tunes as you can, songs that you like, that you, well, the ones that you want to play. Learn them really well, and 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 just you know one by one, just start to amass repertoire. You know, learn this one, whatever challenge. You kind of treat it almost like a classical education in the sense of you know you take the piece of repertoire that 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 will garner the skills that you need to. Need, need to have in order to do it and then you get that one out of the way and then you go on to the next tune that's got other skills that you need to you know, it requires other skills and you work on that one and pretty soon you start to be you know you, the, the gaps fill in and you become a more well-rounded player but i think that i think that for guys who just want to have fun and be able to function you know as a weekend warrior or whatever you know uh i yeah i, I really think that I really think that just knowing as much material as you can know is is the is the big key. So and a lot of it's you know a lot of it's not that hard to play. You know, I mean, technically hard to play. A lot of a lot of classic rock lines are you know it's it's that's really not what it's about. It's more about the functionality. It's more about having being able to play in time, have a groove, have a sound, show up on time, not be a jerk. You know, out of the, those are the easy things for most of us anyway. It's um, easy for some, not for yeah, others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else about the future? You mentioned it's it's so wonderful to hear how important fatherhood is and how you're looking after your girls. That seems to be your biggest priority, which is mm -hmm. wonderful to hear. Sounds like you're looking forward to the to the next phase. You phase you mentioned a new record and uh, you know that you, you have the Berkeley teaching gig. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else beyond that, or as far into the future as you can see what you either have in the works or something that you'd like? 
like to do that you haven't accomplished yet? In terms of long term, honestly, no. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I haven't really gotten that far yet. I, um, uh, I've grown a lot. I feel like I've grown a lot musically over the course of COVID. I've gotten to know myself a lot better. Um, and, uh, and John Patitucci and I have become much closer in the last, in the last few years. We've always, we've always been pretty close and, and, and he's always been a great advocate, but, um, he's really inspired me a lot to, um, he's really inspired me a lot to, uh, to just to continue to grow and to continue to kind of, you know, fight my way upstream, um, in the, uh, in the music business. And so, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I have hopes of doing things, but I, I, I don't have a lot of really specific, uh, ideas. Well, it sounds like you always have something in the works and then you'll take the most logical next step and lots of creative will... seeds digging fo floating around in my brain yeah there that's for go. sure it's just a matter of which one i decide to not all plant. bad so. what would you be if you weren't a bass player something outside of music probably an engineer more than likely i mean and and i mean an engineer like not a not a music you know, not an audio engineer but just an engineer, a mechanical engineer, or an electrical engineer, or something like that. I think. Or a railroad engineer. Even better. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, yeah, that's that's pro probably because engineering is still a, you know still an awful lot of cre creativity involved in that. And um, uh, and I and I've you know I've always even as a young kid I, I did I demonstrated a bit of talent for that. So probably would have ended up doing that. Well. I'm glad things turned out the way they did. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I don't have any regrets, man. Keep I doing what you're doing. Please keep us posted on the new record and anything else that uh, you think would be of interest to our audience, and we'll be sure to let them know. Awesome. That's so great. Thanks, John. I Mike really Pope, it. thanks so much. This has been great. This has been inspiring, and it has been fun. Good. I, I, likewise. Thanks for having me. Well, it was my pleasure. With our special guest, Mike Pope. You're watching the number one site for learning bass online for BassPlayersOnly.com, where I've taken the frustration out of learning bass so you can build confidence, have fun, and just enjoy making music. It's not for everyone. It's for BassPlayersOnly.com. We'll see you all next week.